Welcome back. Still to come this morning, Dr Scott's bringing the outdoors inside as he heads off to explore Sandbanks Beach in pool with his pooch scully. Yes, but before that, we've been asking you to get in touch with your relationship woes. Now, author of How to Mend a Broken Heart, Rosie Green, joins us now. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Right, should we get straight to it then? OK, yeah. we have got Jill on the line. Hi, Jill. Hello. Now, Jill, you're you're struggling because your husband refuses to talk about divorce. I, I, explain a little bit about that. About four years ago, we agreed that we would get a divorce because we couldn't um, reconcile our differences. Um, since then, we've not talk, spoken about it. We're still living in the same house, um, and nothing. Every time I bring up the conversation about it. He gets moody, he won't talk about it, and I feel like I'm kind of stuck in limbo. Mm. Need some advice. And how is it living in the house together? Well, um, we get on OK. That's the thing, he's not a bad person. Um, we get on quite well, but there's just no intimacy. I don't want to be there anymore, no. and I'm worried because we have been together nearly 30 years. I'm worried about, you know, what's going to happen with the mortgage and the children in the house, that sort of thing. Mm. But I don't know how to start the communication off, how to get him to talk about it. OK, Rosie? Well, um, it sounds like a pretty tough situation. I think quite often all the sympathy is in this world is sort of uh, left to the person, who, you know, is given to the person who's being left. But it, it's quite a brave thing to leave and it sounds like that's something that you really want to do I mean I would say if it's at all possible if you could get him to relate which is the marriage counselling um, uh, service then actually that might give him a chance to air his um, you know his worries because I think just in in the same way that you're worried about the the things in the future like the mortgage and the money and the children those will probably be all the things that are going around his head but he's probably not had a chance to speak about it because he doesn't really want to think about it so actually to get in front of a counsellor to talk about these things may help you both I think if there's any chance of you getting him there okay the, the thing is Jill I mean I, 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 I think you it's one of those things that whether he gets irritated or not it, it is a conversation you are going to have to have yeah. isn't it yeah, I just I don't know how to start the conversation. Um, I mean, I think it's really time. tricky, but if you if you make sure it's a nice, calm environment, I would say minimal alcohol. You know, alcohol always inflames everything. Mm. And I think yeah. be aware in your mind that, um, you know, sadness is a much harder emotion than anger. So it might be that he, you know, expect him to sort of get angry and cross because it's like he doesn't want to deal with these emotions. So he he probably is going to go to those emotions. But just, you know, lots of space, a really calm environment, you know, just say what you need to say in a really calm manner, I think. And Rosie, Rosie, do you, do you say, you know, that this is, as I said then, this is a conversation that has to happen. Mm. So w would it be, if she said it calmly and without alcohol, that Jill to say, look, this is, this is going to happen, whether I get your help or not, and I'd love to do this properly with you? Absolutely. I think, you know, quite often, you know, he's obviously trying to avoid that conversation. And I can totally understand from your point of view, it's very hard to confront that. But absolutely, it's just something you have to say. I mean, we all have those conversations in life that we don't want to have. And I think you just have to find the right moment, make sure the children aren't there, you know, make sure you've got you've got space to hear him out for whatever he has to say. And then make sure, pro you know, that there are people, supportive people that you can talk to afterwards. And maybe for him, maybe think about where he can go to and who he can talk to afterwards. Because ultimately the best situation for all of you is that you can find a pathway through this amicably. Thank you, Jill. Thanks, Jill. Hope Thank that you very much. Thank you. Sorry. Oh, it sounds so sad. I'm so sorry. Yeah, it's very tough. Um, hi, Jackie. Hello. Hi there. Hi. OK, how Hello, can we help? Hi. Very well, thank you. Um, how, how can we help? Basically, I'm, I'm 50 and um, I've been single for four years. I'm really trying to get into a relationship. Um, and, you know, I've tried all avenues. Basically, I've had friends and family saying, oh, go on the dating website, mm -hmm. this sort of thing. 
But whenever I do, I get like the negative aspect of it, which is quite upsetting. And I've had to learn basically to laugh about it. Um, so, for example, I've had people asking me, am I a lady boy? You know, when oh. they've seen photographs of me, um, they then, I've got a bit of a junk in the trunk, as they say. <laughs> so I usually get people asking me, you know, is that real? You know, is it photoshopped? And then it all becomes about the, the rear. The appearance. And the, it appearance. Is quite, the appearance, yes. And um, I people do say, oh, you're very good looking. You know, I'm like a size eight quite petite you know and um i really would like to get a relationship to go into being engaged to be yeah. married mm -hmm. okay. and it's just not, never happened with me i always get like i say the negative aspects which can be quite upsetting yeah um, i'm sure and that's sort of sappy confidence it's, as well mm. yes exactly yes yeah. i got to a stage where i was like wearing just like baggy clothes and things like this mm. Okay. Uh, yes, okay. I, I need advice. Um... Right, Rosie, so what, what, what do you say here? Well, I've been there too, Jackie. I've been on those dating sites. And, I, you know, I mean, I think dating sites are amazing in that, you know, they do kind of give you access to all these people that are looking for love and relationships. But they are yeah. also really tough on your self-esteem, I think. I mean, I read a brilliant book called uh, It's Just a Date, which I think is a really, it's really good because it, it, basically you have to develop a sort of resilience and a kind of Teflon coating because there are all these things that happen on dating websites. There's ghosting where people will chat to you intensely and then just That's suddenly right. disappear. Yes, I've There's had bread that too, yes. where people just sort of leave little bits of, you know, every so often they'll send you a little note, you know, to remind you they're still there, but they have no intention of meeting up yes. in real life. Yep, I've had I that happen so too. I think so much of it is about confidence and developing that resilience and actually not, I know you've said you want to get Get married and you know you'd like to get engaged but actually it's just sort of treating it you know sort of looking it in the here and now a nice relationship a nice chat not putting too much expectation on it initially and then also having sort of three or four guys that you're chatting to because I think then one if one of them disappears or if one of them says a rude thing you know you've got the other three or four to fall back on so I think you know it's about you know, sort of lowering your expectations initially and then also just having, you know, a, a more people that you're chatting to so you're not reliant on one person for your sort of self-esteem boost. Yeah. Also, Rosie, that that's online, you know, so the virtual thing. You never really get... And obviously it's incredibly successful and people mm. have found, you know, love... Long, yeah, of course. ...everlasting love on, on, online. But for something like this, as we're all beginning to creep back up out of... Uh, of uh, from under our rocks... Mm -hmm. blinking into the sunshine um is it is it better uh, to 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 go out and and join clubs or to be seen out doing something yeah well i absolutely think i mean i think it's the the good thing about the apps is you know everyone out there is single you hope they are and you know it's a very obvious mechanism for mm. meeting people where you could go and join a cycling club or a rowing club or and, and not actually meet someone but i think for this lane, for Jackie, it's really important to do those kind of things anyway, to go and join a club or to find your interests or to find something that really floats your boat, because ultimately that makes you a more attractive person with your own interests. And it means that you're you're less focused on romance Meeting to hold somebody. up yeah. Yeah. That should be the cherry on the cake, really, rather than the thing yeah. that you're shooting for And all I think the there's time. a lot more hope now. Because I was talking to a couple of my friends yesterday who are single and you're not when you are talking to people on those apps, there's now sort of intent to actually be able to meet somebody somewhere. Yeah. It's not been we've had a year of people trying to communicate and not seeing that person. So there's a bit of promise now. Yeah, I think it was very, um, it was disillusioning to, for people to go on dates and sort of be walking around in the freezing cold. You can't have a drink, you can't, you know, you can't do any of those things that kind of lubricate, for want of a better word, your date. Ooh. But no, I think there is, okay. there is absolutely a good feeling coming up, you know. <laughs> Um, just uh, just finally here, um, Jude says, I've been with my girlfriend for two years. We've been separated throughout lockdown and as a result, we drifted apart. I feel the relationship is coming to an end and she does too. However, I'd like to carry on and I'm finding it hard to deal with my emotions. Aww. How do I move on? 
Well, I think it's really tough to move on. And that's what, you know, on my Instagram, that's where I get most of my messages about. Um, and, and from my own point of view, when, when, you know, when my marriage broke up, for me, that was the big thing. Like, how do I kind of get myself back? And I think it's really important to know that actually recovery and healing is a is a well-trodden pathway. So, you know, it's it's a bit like the grief pathway. You kind of go through denial and then detachment and then acceptance and then growth so it's important to realize it will take time but again it's about putting the focus onto you rather than the focus on them because we can spend so long sort of thinking what are they doing now who are they with what's you know what's going on in their life but actually it's about kind of thinking what's important to me what do I want yeah. to do by finding you again mm -hmm. thanks Rosie thank, thank you very you. much indeed no thank you all right, still to come, we are heading outdoors with Dr. Scott and his trusty companion, Scully, so we'll see you in a minute.